Welcome to the Gridcast, where we get into the nitty gritty of all things hockey. From the East to the West Coast, here are your hosts, Matt Pierce, Nikosh Ganguly, and Darius Dominguez. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to this episode, the post-trade deadline episode of the Gridcast. And wow, was it an eventful um, week leading up to it. Um, maybe not so much the day itself, but fellas, um, how are we feeling about the, the NHL's trade season um, this this week? Uh, yeah, like you said, pretty eventful compared to recent years. There was actually stuff that happened, and there were big names that were moved. Mm-hmm. Definitely the best trade deadline since the cap was introduced. For sure. Um, and yeah, there was a lot of deals to happen. So what we're going to do today, we're going to go through um, all the important ones, discuss how we like it for each side, and we will go from there. But So the last episode um, that we were here for, we covered um, the Dmitry Orlov to Boston trade. So now we're going to go on from there. And the first trade we have to cover today is um, Vitaly Kravtsov was finally moved from the New York Rangers to the Vancouver Canucks. Um, um, he's, he requested a trade, I feel like, like twice. And then he went back to Russia for a bit. And then he came uh, back to NHL, barely played. Now he's finally maybe getting a shot in Vancouver. Do we like this, Do we like this move for Vancouver, Matt? Uh, for Vancouver, they're taking on a bit of a reclamation project. And then it seems to be um, on the Rangers side, they have so many of these players that they drafted and they just couldn't get um, the the potential that was once uh, spoken of them. Because Kravtsov, mm-hmm. uh, what was the other one, like uh, Lisa Anderson. Mm-hmm. So it, it, it's, it's a good move for both sides. Once a reclamation push. project, uh, and then uh, one side uh, gets rid of that reclamation project. Yeah. Um, it's, yeah, it's something too crazy. Yeah, it's good for uh, Vancouver. They get a, a younger-ish player, uh, which is what they need. And I'm sure we'll get to Vancouver down the down the road here in the episode. But uh, they need more of that, so it's good for them. And then, uh, you know, the, obviously it wasn't going to work out for the Rangers. The Rangers don't even know how to develop young players. Um, so, good trade. Yeah, um, it's, it's, yeah, Vancouver could um, just use another guy there. Um, it's good to take a flyer. But um, that being said... That was in preparation for a trade that we'll get to later, but the Jets did the Jets did make an, make one one major ad um, this trade season. They acquired Nino Niederreiter from the National Predators because they they did sell a little bit. Matt, we'll get into uh, more of that a little later. But um, yeah, Nino Niederreiter first second round pick. I think that was a great ad for um, Winnipeg. I think um, it's interesting to me because he just signed in uh, in Nashville like two years four mil and. Getting, I think it was like a, what, what year was the second? Like 25 or something? Um, 2024 second for Nino. You know, Nino is a really consistent player, man. Um, decent play driver. You can put the puck in the net. Not the greatest passer, but great move for the Jets. I feel like they could have done more this deadline. Um, I don't know. We, the trade was good, but do you guys think the Jets could have maybe pushed for some more assets here? Uh, a little bit more, but it seems like Shovel Day off. He likes to not take risks. Like that's just the type of GM he is. You won't make, you won't see him make any big splashes. But you know, and then the trade today, like you said, we'll get uh, get into it some more. I he's just he's just playing it safe. I think uh, I'm a little surprised, honestly. I think the Jets, uh, like for as well as they're doing, like they didn't really add much. Niederreiter's a good player. He's a good. Uh, I think he's a good playoff performer too, and he's been there like with Nashville, um, and I think he he played. Was he with Carolina last year? Maybe he was with Carolina for a couple yeah, of so years. Yeah, so he's he's had a couple playoff runs. Like he's a good player for the playoffs. Like it's a good move, but I'm just shocked that that's the like pretty much the only move that they made. They didn't really go out and get a big fish. Um, but yeah, it's a good trade for what it is. Yeah, and I think with Nino Nino Ryder getting a guy who's who's decently consistent. He's half a point a game this year. I um, in his career, he he usually gets between that um eighteen twenty five goal mark. So he's kind of there. Um, on the low end, he's probably a 20-goal guy, like, at any given moment. So that's really good for them. And then, um, generally speaking, like, he's a middle six guy for the Jets. I feel like they could have used a little more. They've kind of tailed off from the beginning of the season. And I just think um, it could have been it could could have been um, a little – there was, there was more out there for them to do, I think, at the end of the day. And they had the assets to maybe make some moves. They have some young guys. They could have swung maybe for a bigger fish. When we look at what – 
Timo Meyer or I know they probably wouldn't have went after a guy like Jacob Chikorin. But when we look at what, what those guys got, um, it feels like the Jets had the assets to maybe pay, um, but maybe they just didn't feel like it was time. But moving on, we have one of like the only moves the Canadians did um, this season. Uh, I felt like they could have maybe done a little more here. They had guys like um, Sean Monaghan and Joel Edmondson. Maybe, maybe, maybe try and with Josh Anderson. We've seen crazier things happen. But all they did was really swap Evgeny Dodonov for Denis Gurianov. And I think this trade makes sense for Montreal. Um, Dodonov was, um, I think, on a one-year deal. Um, really not that great for them. Gurianov is a guy who I feel like um, everyone has touted him as like, oh, he's this young guy who's going to um, hit his potential soon. And I feel like he's kind of the guy where, like, you think he's been, like, 22 for, like, five years. And all of a sudden he's, like, He's like 25, 26, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe he's like, you know, not the guy we thought he was going to be. But they both scored already for their new teams, which is cool. But I think it's a it's a decent trade, Matt. Uh, what did you see from that? I mean, yeah. Uh, I feel like Gurianov, in the, in the eyes of Stars fans, kind of peaked in the bubble. And a change of scenery always works. Uh, looking here on Daily Faceoff, they have him in as the, uh, the top left wing. Uh, with Suzuki as a center and a Mike Hoffman on the other wing. So, I mean, that's not too bad. And then looking on the other side here for the Stars, you have Dodonov on the second line uh, with Johnston and Ben on his wing. So, yeah. That's a pretty, uh, changes... that's a pretty, that's a decent line, I feel like, it, going it, into the playoffs. It is, it is, yeah, considering, like, Dodonov probably wouldn't have made that much of an impact on the Habs. I mean, like I said, uh, nice change of scenery for both guys. Yeah. Yeah, I think a good move for the Stars, actually, because they give up a guy who, like Matt said, pretty much peaked in the bubble. We haven't seen much out of him in the last two years. Uh, And then you look at the Donov on a crappy Habs team, to say the least. He has 21 points, uh, which is not bad considering the role he was given. Uh, Like, he's been given more of a role lately um, because of all the injuries and stuff. But, like, throughout the year, he's not the go-to guy or anything. So, um, Mm -hmm. I think... Um, they get a good, like Matt said, like that's a nice, that's a nice line that they put together now in Dallas. So um, it's a good, it's a good little swap. Like we'll see what happens. It's very interesting, but um, for the Habs, I'm like in the overall scope, I'm kind of surprised that they didn't just do more. Like I think they feel they're not that far away, but they're a little far away. It's far away from what? Like competing, like, like it, yeah. If they have all these guys back and they're healthy and they have a few years under their, I don't belt, think, I think they're, they're. I don't think they're remotely close to the playoffs yet. They're, they're, I don't either, not, but I think no. they think they're close. Like instead of trading guys like Monahan and stuff, they'd rather keep them to mentor these young guys. When in reality, they should just hand the keys over. But the yeah. thing, who 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 wants Monahan? That too, it's no, hard dude, to give up someone, a guy like that. But they got to move on no, from Josh like, Anderson too. No, but like Matt, look at the guys who have been moved. Like who the, who wants like like John Klingberg nowadays. You know what I mean? He got traded. Not for much, apparently, he got apparently traded. Minnesota, yeah. Yeah. But like, how do you not even sense. move how do you not even move Edmondson for uh something, right? Like we saw Kane Dude, there was there was rumors where he was like going for a first. And then yeah. he didn't go at all. And like you're telling me a guy like Joel Edmondson who was like his his narrative, whether you think he's good or not, um, is he's a playoff he's a playoff defenseman. Yeah. He's big, he's strong, he cross cross checks people in the back. You're telling me a team wouldn't pay for a guy like that? Dude, Ben Schrott went for a first last year. Lou Shen got traded this year. A lot of these guys get, like, in the playoffs, teams are realizing that, like, you know, because a lot of people talk about penalty differential, right? Like, oh, these guys take a lot of penalties. Mm -hmm. But then you go to the playoffs, and none of these penalties that they take get called anymore. So it's like, does it really matter? So I was surprised um, Ken Hughes and co. did not do just a little bit more to maybe get some kind of assets. Um, they might, and I think this year they're going to be too good to get Bedard. Um, Florida might creak in the playoffs, but even if they don't, it's um, it's going to be a low chance at first. And I like just getting back to Gurianov here about what Matt said about him peaking in 2019-20. Um, he had 17 points in 27 games in in that playoff bubble run. And then last season, in the five games he played, he had zero points. So, um. You know, goes to show you that, you know, maybe not the, maybe, you know, this player. But at the end of the day, um, he's not too old. He is, he's, he's 25. Like I said, he's the guy that's been 22 for like three years. But all of a sudden he turns 25 and you're like, whatever. But 
Um, I do think it's it's the perfect swap between a team that's going for the cup and a team that's rebuilding. Let's make a trade for a guy that's probably more ready to suit our roster now, and you can deal with Guriana, whether he becomes good or not. It doesn't matter to you guys. And Dallas gets a guy back for a piece they didn't really um, think was going to help them win the cup. So I like the trade for that. But next up, um, Vegas acquired Ivan Barbashev. So the St. Louis Blues were a massive um, player in the um, trade deadline here, maybe surprising to some people um, going to the beginning of their season. But as we said, they moved O'Reilly, um, they moved Tarasenko, and now they moved Barbashev for a prospect in Zach Dean. And I think Vegas solidifies their depth here. They have, they have a lot of injuries, so um, I feel like, you know, the more players, the better here. What do we think? I mean, yeah, that's a very low-risk trade for both sides here. Um, I haven't really seen much of Zach Dean other than in the World Juniors, so can't comment too much on that. But Barbashev, he's, he's, a, he's a solid player for the Blues whenever I did watch them. Solid player for the Blues, like Matt said, and a playoff guy too. Um, Craig Berube uh, credited a guy like Barbashev on the third line as a big reason why the, the Blues won the Stanley Cup in 2019, that he had a, a big part in it. Uh, the Blues have not been that great this year. He's put up 30 points in 60 games, which is, you know, he's half a point of player, a uh, game player, which is not bad. Um, and then on the other end, Zach Dean, obviously, he was in the World Juniors, so people got a little bit of a look at him, but he wasn't used in a very prominent role. Uh, but he has 51 points in 39 games for Gatineau in the queue, so um, he's eclipsing his uh, career high every year in the queue, which is I don't know. That's nice, I guess, <laughs> for uh, to it's see progression. But like, queue. it's the queue, right? It's so you gotta queue. you gotta make that jump. But um, no, he's he's putting up good points there. So it looks like he might be a player. Yeah, I, I think he's a guy for St. Louis. Um, and Vegas had no zero use for a guy like Zach Dean in the way yep. they build their teams. Um, Vegas made another trade, which I thought was hella interesting. That we will get into a little later. We're doing these kind of more uh, chronologically. Um. So the next trade we have here is going to be, um, well, Timo Meyer finally got moved um, to the New Jersey Devils. Now this trade was freaking massive. Um, let me attempt, let me attempt to read it's the names, names that were involved here. in this trade <laughs> because, um, dude, there were some European names that I'm not going to be able to pronounce correctly. I'm going to try my best here. So. Um, the Sharks acquired Andreas Janssen, former Leaf. Um, uh, hasn't really been the greatest player since leaving the Leafs. Um, he showed a lot of promise in Toronto, but um, signed a big contract, didn't play that good, got traded. Fabian Zetterlund has had um, a pretty good season in New Jersey. I know he was a topic of conversation when um, the season kind of started, but um, 23 years old, 20 points, 47 games, nothing too crazy. Um, Zach, um, I don't know how to pronounce Ocu Ocutuk. Um I'm I'm sorry if I butchered that. And Shakir uh Mukuma Um and then a first, a second, and a seventh, and they're all conditional. Um, so I think it can become another first if the Devils make a front in the playoffs. And the Devils obviously acquire Scott Harrington and Timo Meyer, um, the biggest trade piece in this deadline. They got some other guys, um, pretty negligible, and a fifth round pick really pushes that over the edge. Um, so, out of all the places we thought Timo Meyer was going to go to, we all, we said from the beginning, of the beginning of the season, it was either the Devils or the Hurricanes. And the Devils got him. So, what do we do? When this trade was announced, first of all, it took five hours for us to see the damn full trade. <laughs> and then, second of all, we, I, am I in the majority in this call saying that, you know, it was kind of underwhelming considering what we thought Timo Meyer was going to go for. The fact that the Devils were able to get Meyer without giving up Luke Hughes, uh, Alexander Holtz, Simon Nemich, uh, and, the, and the other prospect that's escaping Dawson right Mercer. now. Dawson Mercer, Dawson Mercer is Mercer. ridiculous. That is a steal and a half. Mike Greer, what are you thinking? I think it was the type of situation, though, uh, on the Sharks side where you run into, like, there are two teams who can take this guy realistically and resign him which at the end of the day like with his contract like him being an rfa teams are not going to take him as like a, a rental right so if you're looking at like two teams have him, they kind of have all the leverage so the devils could have just been like nah we're not giving that up 
Uh, obviously, if you want him, you're going to have to give up that first round pick and a few uh, decent players here and there. Um, I also think Janssen is a little bit of a wild card in this. If he could stay healthy, like for the Sharks, that's a good pickup because he's a good player. He just has to stay healthy. He's only played four games this year. Um, he's been in the HL a lot. Yeah. That's but I mean, I, at the yeah. NHL level, right? You want to see him at the NHL level. But yeah, um, yeah, it should be interesting. Obviously, we know what Meyer can do. Uh, and we know what the Devils are about this year. Um, and they're on a collision course. Have you seen the top six uh, from the Rangers and the Devils? Because they're probably playing each other. I need that. That looks really I fun. I need that so it, bad. It, yeah. It's appointment viewing. That's yeah, yeah. Funny. It looks like a really fun time for us, not for those two teams. Now, so, here's, now yeah. let me ask you guys a question. Who takes that series right now? And in how many New games? New Jersey. New Jersey in really? six or seven. Yeah. I think the Rangers, definitely. Probably six or seven as well. Like, it's going I the distance. Jer- I love New Jersey's um, team a lot more than the Rangers. The Rangers have a lot of names, but the um, the Devils have a lot of guys, like actual guys. Um, when I'm looking at um, – I know well, we can compare it here. Can someone – if someone could pull up the Rangers roster here, but just looking at yes, this. Sir. um, Tatar, Heischer, Mercer, Meyer – Sharon Govich, Hughes, Brat, um, Andre Palat, um, Eric Holla, Jesper Bockwist, Miles Wood, M- Michael McLeod, and Nathan Bashan on your fourth line is just nasty to deal with. I love with. those guys. I know I'm a Steelheads guy, I'm a Saga guy, and they were playing there when I was working for them. That's a sick for- fourth line, man. They're so good. And then their defense to me is like almost second to none. Um, Colorado may be arguably better, but mm-hmm. Jonas Siegenthaler, Dougie Hamilton, Ryan Graves, and John Marino, and then Kev. Well, I guess Kevin Ball is getting minutes here. Uh-huh. And then, um, who was it? Damon Severson. And then on their, um, Timo Meyer's not even, I think he's still hurt, like, a little bit. He's day-to-day. Yeah. Um, he's not listed in daily face But you had a guy like Timo Meyer to that. And I think, uh, Matt, you have the, um, the Rangers here. Can you just tell me their their um their top six and their defense right now? Uh, Yeah, top six. You got Kreider, Zabinijad, Tarasenko, uh, and then Panera and Trocek, Kane which is pound for pound, like on paper, one of the best top sixes in the league. Mm-hmm. And then like that fourth line, you have like Jimmy VC, Barkley Goudreau, and like Tyler Mott. That's pretty, that's pretty solid. It's it's nothing like New Jersey. Uh, and then their defensive pairings, because I know they had to run. Um, Miller suspended. Yeah, 12 and five. Guys. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so they and, got like Nico like Mikola. Ben Harper, is, ben Harper is a regular player for them. I can't take them in a playoff series, man. Yeah. Because, yeah, you got, like, Mikola, Fox, Harper, Truba, and Schneider. So, yeah. Um, you can't uh, take them uh, in the playoff series, though? <laughs> Devils who's, who's the goalie? Who's their goalie? Just Durkin. Also, Lindgren is day-to-day. So, that looks a lot worse than it actually is. Yeah. I think um, I'm, I think the Devils are just – I also think the Devils have been a better coach team this year, generally speaking. Um, as much as I like Gerard Gallant, um, um, Lindy Ruff, dude, after the fire Lindy chance, um, kind of been <laughs> – Kind of in, um, not too bad at all. Coach and, of the year? Coach of the year? Yeah, question mark, question mark. Um, but, yeah, I would take the Devils um, in a regular series. But I, I would love for it to go seven. Like, I think it would be really good and a lot of fun. Like, Patrick Kane being back in the playoffs is really good for the league. But we'll get into the Patrick Kane trade in due time. But next up, um, we have the most insane, insane trade of the trade deadline, in my opinion. Um <laughs> Tanner Janot went to the Tampa Bay Lightning. Tanner Janot for let's let's go here. Cal Foot. Every pick. Um <laughs> Cal Foot, former first rounder. A 2025 first. A 2024 second. A 2023 third. A 2024 fourth. And a 2023 fifth. For Tanner Janot. Um, Darius, can you do me a favor and read out Tanner Janot's um production um Real quick, absolutely. I think it's Dude, it's this like year, this year's production. Yeah, this guy has he has played fifty six games. Okay, for the Nashville Predators, who are they're decent. Like they're they're probably not going to make the playoffs, but they're, they're decent. Pretty right? mid. They're pretty mid, but they're not like the worst. They're not the Sharks. You know what I'm saying? So he's played fifty six games. He has five goals. Five goals. He has nine assists for fourteen points. He also has eighty five penalty minutes, which is quite a bit, I guess. But um, who cares? Yeah, this guy's not uh, scoring for you. What a shit trade. Hey, just because it's the Lightning, we're not. I'm not taking it easy on the Lightning. That's a shit trade, dude. 
Yeah, like they, they're no, they're I getting heard... him for his grit. I get that, but he doesn't. But score. they got they have they have the they have the benefit of the doubt because of the good row and the Coleman trade. But I know, I know. And Blake Coleman was a good player when they traded for him. Um, Barkley Goodrow was kind of mad, but it's like Tanner Schmidt last year um, was pretty high in the Calder voting. I think he was fourth or fifth. Um, but last year, his first year in the NHL, he shot like twenty percent or something insane. Like the best shooters in the league don't shoot twenty percent. Um, and he had like twenty four goals or something like that. Um, I don't, I don't think he ever does that again. And I, I'm, I'm kind of over the narrative of like. Um, I know you said pedal, like pedal, like pedal the minutes because mm-hmm. it speaks to his physicality, of course. Does it? But I'm kind of over using that as like a stat to value players, because like, what happens when you're when you're pedaling this club? You're not playing, you know what I mean? And like you you you're traded for to be like to play, you know, not sit in the box. So if he's taking like roughing penalties, interference penalties, all you're doing is putting the other team on the power play, and um I don't I don't know how I don't know if that's beneficial at all to um. To your team here, and um, Matt. So, um, yeah, what did you what did you think here? That's a dude, that's a big price for a third liner. I'm so stupid. Which but is what he is on any other team. Their third line to, is what? Um, uh, Colton, Paul, and Jeanneau. That's good though. That's a good third line, but dude, that's a lot. Yeah, no, it's a lot. It's it's not that it's not a good third line, or that he's not a a good player who will play a uh, a role for this team, a role that they need filled. It's that they gave up so much for him. But it, it seems to work out for them every year, and that's the stupid part. And it I probably know, until will it again. doesn't. Until he's going to score. He's going to score. He's going to eat the Leafs alive in the first round yeah. series. He's going to be uh, gonna Nick happen. Paul from last year where, when yeah. it counts, I know. So um, that'll be interesting. And it's just um, I my favorite thing during the trade deadline was um, comparing every return to the Tanner Geno trade. Like I'm looking at the Timo Meyer return and I feel like contextually um Tampa paid way more for a guy like Tanner Janot than New Jersey paid for a guy like Timo Meyer. So um and then like Jacob Chickerin, um all those like all the big names like Ryan O'Reilly. So I think that is crazy to me. But we'll see what happens in the playoffs. Tampa just gets the benefit of the doubt because they won um they won back to back cups by doing those kind of trades. Um next up the Leafs Pulled an insane trade out of their hat. Um, everyone, you know, after they got Ryan O'Reilly, they were like, okay, yo, Dubas might do some, like, work around the edges. Um, and he did not – he kind of did that, but in a big way. He acquired um, Jake McCabe and Sam Lafferty in exchange for Pavel Gogolev, jo- Joey Anderson, a 2025 first and a 2026 second. So – now, Jacob McCabe has played two games with the Leafs. Edmonton, Matt, okay, he didn't look that good, you know. But against Calgary last night, Jacob McCabe looked amazing. Um, Darius, speak to, speak to the trade for us here. Okay, so I think it's been overblown already too. But, like, you know what you're getting with these two players? Like, they're not kinda, they're not coming in here to score and be like the other guys, right? You know what you're getting with these two players. And McCabe makes the defense just that much better. And, <clears throat> excuse me, against Edmonton, it wasn't, like, blame whatever you want. They weren't ready for prime time, whatever it was. The guy, All these new guys are coming in off trade. They don't know what's going on. They haven't practiced yet, whatever. Against Calgary, they, look, they looked good. Uh, and McCabe looked really good. I'm really happy with McCabe as a Leafs fan. Uh, and Lafferty, too. This guy gets in on the forecheck, like, like no other leaf does. I'm sorry. Like him and Yarn Croak just are literally like skating for their lives out there as if somebody's chasing them. And I love it. And um he's a big he's a big body. He gets to the front of the net. It's refreshing and that's exactly the type of stuff they need on their third and fourth line. They need more of that. So, it's a perfect trade. And going back the other way, like Joey Anderson uh for example, like Gogolev is literally just a body. Roster. <laughs> like, yeah, he's just roster. It's a roster spot. But um like he could turn into something but Probably not. Like, he might end up with the Blackhawks, but they have nobody. So, uh, But Joey Anderson's, like, a point-of-game player in the AHL, so that could be something. He could be an NHL player, and he should be playing in the NHL for the Blackhawks. So NHL player. Yeah. He's an NHL player. For sure. And yeah. then you give up uh, – you you don't give up any roster players. You give up the first-round pick. Obviously, it's going to happen. Uh, and you get two-fifths back. Like, this is – if it was ever appropriate, ever an appropriate time, masterclass by Kyle Dubas. Yeah, and I also think 
Um, Dubas hits on like most of his draft picks. Mm-hmm. Um, I think I I hope they re-sign him. I really do. Um, after all this, but that's a um, topic for another day. But yes. Um, Matt, you when the oil when the Leafs got Ryan O'Reilly, you said they look scary, and you said you know they might be a scary team in the playoffs. They might be stacked, as one might say. Um, now that they have McKay, what are you what are you seeing from the Leafs? Uh, I'm seeing a team that's going all in. Like, I still stand by it. I, th- I think they'll do some damage in the playoffs. They'll win a round. I guarantee oh, they boy. will win a round. Oh, Matt boy. certified, everyone. Matt certified. I, th- I think the we're Leafs all are winning a round. I think we're all a little scarred as Leaf fans, and like we're just conditioned to be like, obviously they're gonna lose because we've seen it time and time and time again. And Tampa is that team. You know what I mean? Like they are him. But the Leafs are gonna be a hard out if Tampa wins. Like good on them because this is a damn good team. And it sucks that like one of these teams have to go out in the first round. And we're, we can talk about it till we're blue in the face, just like everyone else about the playoff format. But they're a damn good team. Like, people need to start realizing, like, it could be different this year. Like, they are deep in every position. Yep. They're four lines deep. They're three. They're, like, nine defensive. They have nine teams NHL defensemen, point. if you want to call Justin Hall an NHL defenseman. <laughs> and he didn't. He Herman Kerfoot made it through the, the roster <laughs> massacre. So, um We'll, we'll see what happens there. But, yeah, dude, good trade for the Leafs. I'm excited for what McCabe brings. I'm excited for what Lafferty brings. Um, they're, they're, they're a team that will do damage in the playoffs because now they have guys that are, like, playoff playoff guys. You know, not the fastest guys, not the most skillful guys. But, you know, they're going to they're gonna get the hard goals that, uh-huh. you know, a skilled guy might not be able to get. And I feel like I sound like a freaking um, uncle saying this. But it's like um, I, I'm a, I'm, I've always been in agreement with getting guys that, are, you know, play like this. But – not guys that also don't know how to play hockey. You know, like people yeah. are talking about getting these getting these players like Eric Goodbranson or like get Ben Sharapa. But like they're not they don't like McCabe and Lafferty, they're physical but also positively impact the game. Um yes. outside of just their physicality. But they use it to positively impact the game. Thing with like a guy like Schrod is like, yes, he's hella physical, but it's cause like the puck is in his own zone the whole time. He has to hit people because <laughs> they never have the puck. So um I like the move from Dubis. And I think the narrative on Dubas has changed too, that he just, you know, he's just analytical nerd guy, which he is, but you know, we traded for these guys that are both, you know, insane analytically and insanely um smart players. They use their body to their advantage. So good trade for the Leafs. I'm looking forward to that. Um, but with that being said, the next trade that happened, the next big one anyway, is going to be um Matt. Let me let me let, let me let Matt cook here. So the yes, we put Yarby era in Edmonton is finally over. I feel like it went on for way too long. He got traded for like some guy named Patrick Pustola who might be a player. But Matt, what was your reaction, man? Um, I'm, I'm just glad that he's off to uh, greener pastures because obviously uh, he wasn't being used in the role that he should have been used in. But he's like a fourth line grinder and that's not what he pl- That's not how he plays. So it's pretty much, unfortunately, it's just a cap dump. But he's mm-hmm. going to Carolina. He can be with his Finnish friends. He can be with uh, Kakaniemi <laughs> in Ajo. So, yeah. It's just I, I could go on for hours, but uh, yeah. New, new beginnings. That's, that's what he. I'm deserves. happy for the guy. I'm happy yeah, for the guy. Good for him. Very happy. Good for him. Not he for the team. It. <laughs> and I think the thing with Poyarvi is, I I kind of had this in like the back of my head. For a while, that um, Carolina kind of made the most sense for him. Um, just a mm-hmm. team that takes these guys who are um, like they do it all the time. Like they took Tony D'Angelo, put him with um, Jacob Slavin, who's the best defensive defenseman in the league, hit his defensive warts, um, had him put up like 60 points, and then they freaking finessed Philadelphia for him. They're like, oh yeah, look, he's good, and then they traded, and then they acquired Brent Burns for like almost nothing because he was in the sunset of his career. And I was having a revitalized season because their their asset management is, is pretty good. Yeah. Um now you had a guy like Puyarvi, misuse at Edmonton. Um all his analytics say he should be um way better than he is. Expected goals are high. He controls he's 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 these on the ice, most of his impacts are positive. But for some reason, the puck just doesn't go in whenever he's skating. So you gotta assume a financial player can figure out how to put pucks in the net. And um, we saw this with Valeri Nachushkin, the exact same story, literally the exact same story. Uh-huh. Um, and now he's amazing. He got a nice contract in Colorado. And 
hopefully Puyarvi can put some puffs in the net. I feel like he he could do that, especially with a team like there's no pressure on him in Carolina. The media is not going to scrutinize him every time he does something wrong, and I think it's a good it's a good play for him. But um, Matt, are you are you at all um excited about the return? It was pretty much just like taking a prospect as like a I don't know is a, a high risk high reward type deal or low risk I I don't know it's just <laughs> fin for a fin. Yeah, but um. I, I read some articles about um Pus, I don't I don't know how to pronounce his name and I feel Neither bad. Neither do I. That's that's the thing. Pustola. Um, Pustola. Pustola. Um, I I I read some articles that say he could be like a middle six, a middle six player, um, on Edmonton. And if he if he becomes like a third liner, the Oilers are happy with that. I don't know when he becomes that third liner, but he's not too old, and I think it could be um a decent play at some point. But Poyarvi, um, I hope I hope it is good in Carolina. Well, at least there's no Mark Spector in Carolina here, fellas. Oh, boy. But the next trade that we will discuss. Um, so quickly, um, Marcus Johansson went back to the wild um, after he was back in, in Washington. So that guy just switches the same team every now and then. So um, the wild the wild got some depth there. That's something they wanted to do throughout the deadline was acquire some depth. But um, I feel like one of the more surprising days is back to the Leafs. Um, randomly, they just made three trades in like an hour. So we're gonna discuss all of those right now. So the first one um, was um, you had Rasmus Sandin getting traded, which was sad to see, um, but it needed to happen. I think it, the writing was on the on the wall for Sandin. Um, there was some stuff with his contracts, some rumors that he kind of wanted out due to um, you know his role. Um, crushing one of the best, like I know it's funny, but like absolutely insane in his minutes that he played. Like insanely, um, when he played on the third pair, just um, crushed those minutes. But it seemed like whenever he played above above that, um, his his issues became a lot more glaring. Um, notably, his skating and his um, like his physicality. And I don't mean like hitting because he was one of the least like most explosive hitters, which is which was kind of random. But he would crush guys. But just like his ability to like you know stay in front of the net and not get like moved around in the corners was just Something happened a lot, but I, I think Washington gets an amazing defenseman in Sandy, and I think he's going to be really good for them. But the Leafs get back a first-round pick, which was Boston's in the Orlov trade, and they get back Eric Gustafson, noted leading the Leafs in points for defenseman Eric Gustafson. Um, now we all know what Eric Gustafson is. Um, not the greatest defense man, not amazing at defense, but it's he's very good offensively. He had a hat trick against the Leafs earlier in the season. Um, Darius, were you sad to see a guy like San Diego? I was sad to see him go in terms of, like, I know what he's going to be. Like, we can see that. He's just not there yet. And, unfortunately, the Leafs are there as a team. They need guys who can play. And he's just not there yet. And it's like they're in the middle of trying to win a Stanley Cup or compete for one. And they're, like, still throwing this guy out there. Like, let's see how he does on the second pairing. So uh, they get a first-round pick back for him, which is something they've you know, traded away. Um, so that was nice to see coming back. And then Gustafson is good depth for the playoffs as well. Obviously, he's not a very good defense man, but he, you know, he can put up points. But he's another body and a guy who's, you know, played in the playoffs um, and had that experience because I don't think Sandine's played yet. Maybe against Montreal, uh, but that turned into a disaster. So um, I think uh, having Gustafson is just a nice little, you know, if you happen to have four guys get injured, he can he can step in, so it, um, it was a decent trade, but sad to see Sandy and go because I know one day he will be a good player. Yeah, and um, just a I think decent asset management from Dubas yeah. getting a first back is like similar to the Niels Lundqvist trade, and um, the other trade the Leafs made. Um, I'm sorry, Matt, you're not going to get a lot of screen time here, <laughs> but um, um, <laughs> his trade's uh, coming. His time's coming. <laughs> it's 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 almost there. But um, next up. We traded um, Pierre Engvall for a third. Um, good riddance. Um, Pierre Engvall, you're yeah. cool, but um, you're a third liner. I got no. I got really nothing else to say. Um, he was he was really tall, and pretty deezed, but he didn't really do anything with it. Man, he did so, not use um, his size to his his advantage ever, ever. No. And no. he literally like for the last like how long has he been on the Leafs? Four years on the Leafs, has just been there, and he hovers around thirty points. Sorry, not even, like, hovers around 20 points each year. He had a good year last year, 
But again, this year he's taking a step back, and he never he doesn't use his size. So see ya. The Leafs, the Leafs are the Leafs were done with their third line and fourth line not doing shit in the playoffs. Yeah. Like the problem is these guys would put up twenty goals in the regular season, but then in the playoffs their third and fourth lines would disappear. Yep. So now they were like, okay, well if we're gonna have third liners that won't score, at least they'll freaking hit someone in the head, you know? So um, I obviously I don't condone that, but like you know what I mean? But it's they just will. like at least, <laughs> yeah. But at least like they'll they'll crush someone. Yeah. And Pierre Engel just wasn't doing that. They had no they had no guys who would like like my thing is if you're not gonna be good at goal scoring, choose something else to be good at, and you know that's true. Maybe maybe punch a guy, hit a guy, you know, hurt a guy, do something. You know, don't just like. Like if you're gonna be this, if you're gonna be touted as a guy who can, you know, skate well, forecheck well, Bob Pierring ball, good forechecker, good skater, good penalty killer. But in the playoffs, his offensive production absolutely disappears. So the Leafs are re envisioning their bottom six, and I think moving on for a guy like Abel and getting a third back, I don't mind that because huh? they traded a third for Luke Shen, who is back on the Leafs. Um, you guys see my background there? He's back yeah. on the Leafs, and I am so excited. Luke Shen is back on the Leafs. Darius, as a guy who, um, you know, been a Leafs fan your um your whole life, you probably you know, I wasn't like cognizant, um, when when they drafted Luke Shen, I was a little um too young, um, uh-huh. to like to, to recognize what was going on. But hey, you probably saw that, and you probably saw him like you know, really early pick, probably really highly touted, yeah. maybe pushed in the league too early, but now he's back. The, so the problem... what's the story here? Yeah, the problem with Shen at the beginning, I from my eyes was like they pushed him a little too early as like the saving the savior, and he was like eighteen, and they pushed him into the shit team, and they're like, yeah, do things, uh, but he was too young. And Luke Shen is who he is. They were expecting him to be like this freaking amazing defenseman. Scott Niedermeyer. Yeah, yeah, Scott, Scott Niedermeyer who would take the puck end to end and score goals. Like that was what they were expecting, and it's like that's not who he is. He is who he is, and this is what he's good at. And if they ever made the playoffs, he would have been able to show that off, uh, especially back then, because things have changed a little bit. Back then, you could like murder people for real. But um, yeah, I, I I am juiced that he's back. Like he is exactly what they need, and he is he's a good player. He's still a very effective player in what he does. Um, and the one thing I loved the most last night, obviously sheltered minutes because they were running seven D. He's pushing guys around after the whistle. He's like, "Hey, dude, I didn't freaking, I didn't like dude, that." He killed Kadri after a whistle. Yeah, yeah, good, like, dude, good. Matt, I don't know if you saw that that clip, no, but I like, didn't. dude, he like after the whistle, like Kadri was just skating and Luke said just drilled him into the yeah. boards. It was so funny. Absolutely, it was, it was it was a nice change of pace. And um, Rough like Darius said, like Darius said, the playoffs. Um, Luke Shen's gonna sh- Luke Shen's gonna play like 11, 12 minutes, but he's gonna hurt people. He's going to hurt people. He's going to make it difficult to play against the team. Every time he's out there, you're not going to be able to do much because he's going to be all over you. He's like six foot five or whatever he is. And after the whistles, he's going to shove you around. He's going to make you hate your life. And the Leafs don't do that. I, I even saw Tavares getting into it last night, and I'm like, who is this guy? Yeah, I, I think I think the thing about the Leafs is now the vibes. The vibes are immaculate, hope as so. they say. Hope, I hope the vibes are way. immaculate. You bring a guy. You bring in a guy like Lucien. The storyline is awesome. Um, and now, like, you know, I feel like I feel like when you bring in a guy, like, all these guys, like, uh, Lafferty, Achari, um, McCabe, and Shen, you know, they kind of, like, bring the team in to something mm-hmm. like that. You know what I mean? Like, okay, well, um, you know, like, a guy like Matthews looks to his left and his right uh, of these guys who are just doing everything to win. You're like, okay, you know, let me let me, let me me get a little amped up here. So, I think it'll be a lot of fun. I, I want the playoffs to happen so bad. Like, I, I'm... After the trade line, like, what are these regular season games, man? Who cares? Like, I feel like from our perspective too, um, the Leafs are the owners, they're making the playoffs. Let's just let's get to April, man. Let's get these, let's get the let's get the real hockey season started here. Um, but yeah, a slow moves from Dubis, and I liked them all. Now, next up, we're gonna let Matt cook one more time. Um <laughs> The Oilers, um, an 85-year-old Ken Holland, as Matt said. He's 85. <laughs> Um, Ken Holland swung after Matt was tearing into him all year. Ken Holland took a big swing, and I think it was a damn good trade. So now what did he do? The the, the, the Nashville Predators, randomly, they're sellers. They're willing to trade anyone all of a sudden except for Yossi Forsberg and Soros. So what does, what does, what does big Ken Holland do? He trades for Matthias Ekholm, one of the most um, – Steady defenseman of the of, for a long time. Um, he was on a sweetheart contract 
for years, and now he's finally getting paid what he's worth. But Thorler's Tyson Berry is gone um, from Edmonton. And in addition to that, Nashville gets Reed Schaefer, a first to fourth. And for some reason, Nashville retained 4%. 4% Very odd number. of Ekholm's salary. And I did see some interesting stuff that, like, um, now Nashville has – so you only have three three salary retention spots. And now for as long as f- fucking Ekholm's contract is, they have that. I think it's a waste. But, Matt, did did Kenny cook? Uh, Kenny Money did, in fact, cook. Oh, no. What a deal. I was not expecting this at all. You know, it's like no Chikrin. That's fine. It's whatever. Uh, no Carlson. Wasn't really expecting him from the start, but Matthias Echo, what an acquisition. And I could even, like, tell. Like, the first game against the Leafs, like, the entire team, calm. Like, it, it was just so, like, invigorating. It was so different. Like, before everybody would run around, but Echo comes in, says, <laughs> I, I, got, I got this, I got this. And the team goes out and whoops, whoops the Leafs. This is, this is what the team needed for the longest time. And Echo and Bouchard, um, probably our cook. best, best defensive cook. pairing since Clef Baum Larson. Okay. Yeah, high bar there. High, <laughs> high bar there. Excuse <laughs> you, excuse you. I won't, I won't accept Oscar Clef Baum <laughs> But what a deal! What a deal! Like, there's um, nothing else, nothing else more I can say about that. Yeah, you can. You guys can um, definitely hear in Matt's tone how excited he is. Just for sure. Oh. <laughs> no, no, Nick, you have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> he's so like giddy how, you never see this how, from Matt no. how many episodes in a row did I say like it's the same old stuff week in week out but something's changed I'm so excited <laughs> it's, it's true though because the Oilers have done not much besides like think, very questionable shit let's be honest like, yeah. oh oh yeah yeah. and I think um, the, the calmness is especially evident when you take Tyson Berry out of a defensive core and put Matisse Ekholm into a defensive core, two uh, um very different players. And um Matt um I want you to um, reflect on Tyson Berry's time as an Oiler <laughs> and give him a proper farewell. Uh, as much as I picked on the guy the past few years, this is probably his like steadiest like season. Like the first this first one in the Canadian division where he like led the league in points by a defenseman but he was a tire fighter because he had nurse on his left side and that was the worst pairing like in the league the worst hot pairing but i mean tyson berry is tyson berry he did his job he did what he was asked to do uh be the qb to a power play that no matter who was the qb it still would have been astronomically high but uh, uh it was it was nice knowing you tyson <laughs> i mean that's not like he was dead but he was he was a, he was a solid uh steady player good good room guy one could say <laughs> seem like they all seem like they all like them actually, so it's a good point. They, they yeah, did, yeah. Point. yeah. And um, I just want to say, right when I saw Tyson Berry was in that deal, I ran to fantasy and picked up Evan Bouchard. <laughs> oh yeah, as you should have yes. done. Yes, yes, I had yeah. I had Berry too. I had to drop him real quick because I'm like, oh, this guy's gonna die in Nashville now. It's gonna dry. Yeah, up. <laughs> they got Yossi there. What's the fuck? Yeah, oh, I have man. Yossi too, so I'm like, I gotta drop <laughs> this guy. It's over. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, good dude. Amazing trade for Oilers. Um. Uh, I don't know how this um this definitely makes them formidable and helps out their sh- their shaky goaltending. I know Stuart Skinner's been decent, but I feel like he's still been a kind of inconsistent a little bit here and there. Jack Campbell um he was good for five games and then he was bad again. So um, and I get nice to, to see just... him live tomorrow night. I'm so excited for that. Look Not at this really, guy. But... Look at oh, this guy, juiced. Matt. Matt is... I've yeah. never seen this guy. Matt is saying he's excited, but I can't. I I don't see it or hear it. Darius, I don't know you're saving it for tomorrow night. You're saving it for tomorrow night. I'm, I'm, sa- I'm saving it for tomorrow night. Okay. Matt is okay. so even he's... keel from years of disappointment, though. You know, it's kind of like Leaf fans, where he's just kind of like in the middle until something good actually happens. Well, see, I, I've learned from years of being a Minnesota Vikings fan, where I, <laughs> I go into the year with new expectations. That way I can't be disappointed. It for works. Sure. <laughs> but, oh, yeah, dude, great move for those. I, 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 I fuck with it. Um, But um, next up, so, showtime on... Broadway, everyone. Now we had an episode called Patrick Tra- Patrick Kane. It's not a New York Ranger, but guess what, guys? Patrick Kane is a New York Ranger. Now, what? A- oh my God, we knew we knew Patrick Kane was going to be a-, a New York Ranger for like a week. It just didn't come into fruition. Now the trade 
not really too crazy. Arizona involved to retain um, 50% of his salary. Um, and they get a third. Um, Chicago gets a second. That could be a first. And they get a fourth. And the Rangers, they get Mr. Showtime himself, Patrick Kane. Now, um, we discussed this um, in the Devils, um, in the Devils, in the Devils thing with Tio Meyer, but Showtime in the playoffs is back, fellas. Now, guys, what does this do for the New York Rangers, number one? And number two, you think Patrick Kane is going to cook? Or just, or what, are, what Patrick Kane are we going to see here? kind of hard to figure out because i watched a bit of the game last night mm-hmm. and he i don't, I don't want to say he looked lost but he looked like he's just going through the motions of learning the the system New team after like what yeah. yeah like how many years was he in chicago for like, you know what i mean six, 16 16 yeah, years, yeah. it's yeah. kind of tough you know <laughs> but yeah dude um it's exciting um what do we think of patrick patrick kane being in madison square guarded i think it's like I watched a little bit of the game last night too, and he sent this backhand pass from like the goal line to the defenseman at the point on the power play, and the garden was just like, ooh, you know, like like they're giddy about toy. it, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, oh, look, he's here. Um, he looks <laughs> weird. Like I, I thought it would look like cool, and I kind of knew what he would look like in a Rangers jersey, but then he got out there, and I'm like, this looks weird as shit. Like he used to wear red. Black Ox jersey, like, it's weird. Um, but it looks, I don't know, it looks cool, man. And um, he definitely looked a little lost last night. But obviously, like, brand new team after, like, playing with, for the same team for his whole career. And um, new systems. He, did, I don't think he practiced with them. Um, so he's going to no. need time to get acclimated. Um, but, yeah, and, and I think... I think there's potential for him to cook. He's a good offensive player still. He really is. He had 45 points in 55 games with the Blackhawks. And and he's back with Artemi Panarin. Exactly. Exactly what I was going to say. They reunited them, and I, I have a feeling they're going to cook come playoff time. It's going to be – they're going to be dangerous. Dude, the NHL playoffs this year, with all the player movement, it's so much more exciting. Yep. Um, I was I, – I made some tweets about this. I'm like – I talked about this last week. Um – Player movement makes every league a lot better um, because, like, now every time um, the playoffs start, oh, oh, my God, this the Leafs made so many acquisitions. Will it work? Um, Patrick Kane versus Timo Meyer, you know, two big – two teams that made massive acquisitions. Um, the Oilers can, like, at home help maybe get them to the Stanley Cup Finals after, you know, um, a couple of conference finals outs. And then you have, like, Boston. They're adding. All these teams are adding. So I think the playoffs this year especially more exciting – I think a guy like Patrick King getting moved is really good because um, I feel like in a lot of hockey cases, like a guy like Patrick, like a, a players like that just kind of be like, you know, they keep their mouth shut, they keep their head down, they don't say anything, and they just, you know, they play out the season. But Patrick King was basically like, I want to get traded, and I want to go to the Rangers, and um, you have to trade me to the Rangers, basically, or I'm going to be disappointed. And now he is a New York Ranger. Um Matt, did it did, did, did it feel weird to you seeing like Pat, a guy like Patrick King getting traded? Oh, of course. After years of seeing him in a Hawks jersey, right? Like the only other type of blue that I've seen Kane wear was like the Team USA, but but it seemed like him in like in a, in a New York Rangers, like in the garden underneath the bright lights of New York. It's kind of cool. I'm not gonna lie. It's exciting. It's really. Cool. I'm a dude. I'm so excited for it. For as we said, Showtime on Broadway. Ooh. The other dark right. horse in this trade, you know that the. Uh, uh, the Blackhawks oh, no. get that the Blackhawks get. Sorry, I was just reading it. His former Mississauga Steelhead, Billy Sari Arvey. Just wanted to point that out. That's all. So, so I saw that. Knew. I knew. I knew. I knew you would bring it up. Yeah, yeah. That's why I didn't say it. Um, I literally sent yeah. it to my friend, and he was like, "Yeah, it's crazy that they got Kane." And I'm like, "No, Sari Arvey. That's the, the biggest Hawks part. got the Hawks got the big the big piece. The Hawks Sorry, won Arvey. this trade." Yep, because I got Billy Sari Arvey. That's right. Who was an OK OHL player. <laughs> yeah, what, right. what, do you, what do you mean? The Rangers also got uh, uh, Cooper Zek, whoever that is. Oh, yeah, no, honestly, I've been following him in college, and uh, he's, yeah, I have no idea what I'm talking about. Yeah, he's lying. Okay, all <laughs> yeah. right, on to the next trade here. <laughs> um, The next big trade. Well, not big. The, okay, first of all, I just want to say this this trade, I felt bad for, um well, Jonathan Quick. Um, So it came out that the LA Kings were going to get... So this was crazy, too, because they were in 
on Chikorin, and people were all saying they could have got Vimelka, but instead they ended up with Vladislav Gavrikov and Jonas Korpisalo. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I think I'd much rather have Jacob Chikorin and Karel Vimelka. But they do end up swinging for Gavrikov, um, who has not been amazing this season, but big body, big playoff guy, that's been a theme. And they get a first and a third Columbus gets. Um, um, we will. I'll just say this now. Um, um, Quick did get flipped to Vegas of all teams, sure. so he's on the Vegas Golden Knights. Um, but there was reports that Jonathan Quick number one was pissed. Of course he's pissed. Um, he's been with the team forever, and they trade him. They trade. Apparently they were on the plane back to um, mm. like LA while he was traded. So I'm sure that was that was cool. That went over and um, yeah. yeah, they just kind of kind of did my man a little dirty. But it's it's fine. He'll get a, he'll get he'll get a statue neck. It's fine. That'll make yeah, up. That's true. <laughs> that's true. And then um yeah, um L A improves their goaltending because Cal Peterson was awful this year. They were running Phoenix Copy out there every night. That guy's not a starter. Jonas Corbosalo has had a decent season. He has kind of a track record of being able to play more games. Maybe not always the best. And obviously Quick was very bad this season as well. So um good good ad for the decent ad. In terms of goaltending for the Kings, but I think they paid a lot. They paid a lot for Gabrikov and um, Corpusalo here. They definitely. Yeah, that didn't, yeah, go ahead, that, that didn't make that. Sorry, that didn't make much sense to me. Um, like I would have just like stayed pat. Yeah, I would have stayed with Quick because now the now the room is upset too. Now you really shook things up. And did you upgrade? Like I know Quick has not been, obviously not Jonathan Quick or even remotely good. But uh, Corpus Allo, like, is it that much of an upgrade to really upset the room that much? Like, I don't think right? so. I don't think so. He's... That that was a that's a nothing trade to me. Like that that is a no reason trade. Yeah, because and... looking looking at the stats here, sorry Nick, um, Corpus Allo, uh, twenty eight games with the Jackets this year, uh, goals against average of three point one seven, and a save percentage of point nine one three, and then quick, uh, thirty one games. Uh, 350 and a save percentage of uh, 876. Also, so I just want to say that sh- that goes to show you how dumb it is to use goals against average as a goalie stat. It makes yeah. no goddamn sense. No. Um, but anyway, continue. Oh, uh, that's all I had to add. Just like the, the stats compared. Nine one three is not um, bad for Corpus Allo. Not it's like considering who, average. who's on. Yeah, yeah. Dude, I think the I think nine one three is really good for a guy like Corpus Allo. Right. Like. League average in terms of save percentage goes down every year. We're at like a 905 now in terms of league average. Yeah. So having a guy that's putting him a 913 is really good. And I think I think LA really just wanted some certainty in that. I don't know if Corpus Allo is a certain guy, but he gives them certainty at the end of the day. And um, quick need to go for salary reasons. I don't, I, don't, I, I still find it crazy that that guy was traded. And now he's on Vegas. And I also don't know. I don't know why Vegas even traded for him. That makes no sense. Yeah. Too, what is going on with that? that? I, why did yeah. they not have? Um, did they use the cap room from Stone being on LTIR? Like, what the hell is that? And like Thompson's injured, but they have Aiden Hill and Laurent Brassois. Who, uh, Brassois is on about... IR. Brassois oh, okay. on IR, so they only have one goalie. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But they, I mean, they called up and traded Hutchinson, Michael Hutchinson. Yeah. Um, go. But um, they got quick to be like a, a, a like a platoon goalie with Aiden Hill, like temporarily, because like unless the Logan Thompson injury is like that bad, like what's quick? Their third best goalie when everyone's healthy. Yes. Maybe their fourth best goalie. And and he makes five point eight unless they did they retain. Was there retention? Uh, the Columbus might have retained. They, Columbus they might have, but to flip no, him. No, they they didn't. They didn't retain. Yeah, so he's making five point eight. That's insane. <laughs> oh wait, wait, sorry to to the Knights. Why? Why can't I? Why can't I oh, here this? we go. Yeah, they retained fifteen percent. Fifteen. Oh, okay, never mind. One sorry. five or five was, zero. Five zero. Okay, so that is not that bad. Still though, it did stupid. It makes no sense for yeah, Vegas. No. I don't know. Like, I don't know why. <laughs> why would you do that? Because know. he's not a good goalie. You could have went out and got anyone else, and probably make less. That that probably makes less. Like, that, that, go get go get Vimelka. And pay the premium. How did nobody pick that guy up? Actually. Also, also, I want to say some. I want to. I want to say some stuff right now. Um, how Cook. could LA, um, not get Chickering 
when he went for a first in two seconds. Chigrin was held up for three weeks. Uh, supposedly going to be trade, traded since October. Brad Clark. Ooh, all these guys. Ooh, they might get all these prospects. Holy shit. And he went for a first in two seconds. That's it. A first in two seconds. I think what it came down to is I heard something um, throughout, I think it was last week, where something leaked from the Canes. Uh, Canes. The Kings. Um, and Arizona really didn't like that. And they were kind of like, okay, we're just going to hold this up now. Uh, and then Ottawa came into the picture. And obviously Chikrin wanted to go to Ottawa. Uh, has family in Ottawa, stuff like that. So I think that just worked out. Because the return was not... I'm sure we'll get to it. They, It sounded like they were going to get way more from LA. So I don't know what that is. Yeah. But yeah. Um, Rumors, sorry, not huh? To off, yeah, <laughs> not, to, not to get off... Not to get off track there. But um, yeah. Uh, that's 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 pretty much it for, for, for Gabrikov and Corpus Allo. So LA, they get a little bit more deep in the playoffs. They get a little bit more, more nasty, more snarl. So that should be... Um, pretty interesting going into the going to the real games here. Uh-huh. Um, so Lars Eller did end up getting traded. He went to Colorado for a second. They shore up their depth there. Um, Colorado did need center depth. I don't know if Lars Eller is their guy, but I thought they were going to make a swing for someone that's a little better. Um, just because Kadri leaving left a big hole in yeah. their center depth, and they've been trying new hook there. He's not there yet. He might be, but he's young. He's really young. Uh-huh. So um, that was interesting. But they did need some center depth there. So good gift for them. I, I like that. That's cool. Yeah, look, looking, at their center, looking at their center depth, they got um, obviously Nate, uh, JT Confer, Lars Eller filling in that, that third line center role. And then you have Dennis Morgan on the fourth line. Yes, sir. Sorry. Continue. Yeah. <laughs> no, when, when I go, as much as I think Colorado's really good, I don't know if you can really win a cup with McKinnon, Confer, Eller, Morgan. You know, and I know sometimes they play Ranton in at center, but he's I think he's more of a winger, generally speaking. So um, I don't know. I don't know, man. I just I feel like Colorado could have maybe swung for someone. That, I, don't, I don't think they were going to get someone crazy, but maybe someone that's a little bit, um, you know, could play a higher role. Um, now, for some reason, the Vancouver Canucks were buyers. They traded a, a first and a third for Philip Ronick. Now, they did get Quinn Hughes' as partner. I got a guy for Quinn Hughes to play with. But why are they buying? They can suck. I, can I start? Because I, I have a very quick thing on this. And Matt, yeah. can, Matt can take it and run after. Um, the Canucks, I just want everyone to understand this very clearly. The Canucks are cooked. They're done. Franchise, fold it. Done. They're in Flyers territory. Matt, go ahead. Um, I want to say that's probably like an ownership move. Ownership refuses to rebuild. And I think Quinn Hughes said, like, even if there's a rebuild, I don't want to be here for it. That's always what you want to hear from your franchise defenseman. But it is, it's just owner, the ownership, uh, Aquilini, just refusing to wave the white flag. Can I accept don't the fate know. of, like, how bad this team is? And Rob Besser didn't get traded. He, he, he requested a trade, like, four months ago, it mm-hmm. felt like. And, like, his agent was, like, talking to teams. Um, like, apparently they were willing to take less to move him. He didn't get moved. Um, apparently there was some – there was fireworks with Pittsburgh. Um, they ended up getting Mikhail Granlin and Nick Benino. I don't know what Pittsburgh's doing. I think we can cover that in the next yeah, episode. Pittsburgh in the grand like... scheme of things. I don't know what they're doing, but <laughs> – Pittsburgh's um, just doing shit. They're just throwing names at a wall, and they're like, yeah. And they're just – it's just a bunch of old guys. Like, I know, I know they're an old team, but, like, get a little younger. Come on. Nick, Nick Benino again. Younger. Oh, he's back. You're going to win a cup now. No. What do you, what do you, that was five what do you expect years ago. Hextall, though? What do you expect from Hextall? Nothing. I don't know, man. Maybe. It, no, but the, my thing was um, Pittsburgh is they managed to keep Latang, Kessel. Not the. Why, why the hell did I say Kessel? Latang, Raquel, <laughs> Rust, and Malkin. And I don't know how he did that. So right. I was. That was that was pretty crazy. But, like. The rest you of it, do not more so than much. That. Yeah. You got more than that. So um that that that's that with Pittsburgh and then um one move I one sneaky move I did like um was the Carolina Hurricanes getting Shane Goss' spear for a third. Now in the grand scheme of things, dude, Arizona um kinda kinda uh, kinda owned the the Flyers with this trade here. Because uh-huh. when I'm looking at the trade here, um Shane Goss' spear um was traded in 
with, with, with a second and a seven. And what do the Flyers get back? Future considerations. Now, two years later, what does Arizona get? They get a third for go for Ghost. So they just essentially got a free second and a free third. You want to know why they got a free second and a free third? Because the Flyers are the stupidest run team in the NHL. They don't know what they're doing. They don't know how to do it. They are just unbelievably dumb. They trade Ghost, and who do they replace him with? Tony fucking D'Angelo, the same fucking player. The same player. They're like, oh, yeah, he's going to fix it. A worse, fucking arguably, scratch. especially this yeah. year, but and, worse. And then JVR, older guy, last year of his contract, half for Tamex, three and a half million. We've seen every fucking player this this trade deadline get traded through two teams. And what happens? He's still on the team. He's still on the team. He's still on the team. And Chuck Fletcher, we didn't get any fucking solid offers. Bro, trade the guy for fucking nothing, bro. Just trade him. What is he doing? He's just sitting there, bro. And I feel bad for him. Like, give him, give him, give him another run. Holy. <laughs> the Flyers are fucking stupid, bro. They don't know. They don't know anything. They don't know anything. Jesus Christ. But, yeah, man, I just, I just, I was just was hoping JBR would get on a team. You know, maybe play in the playoffs. Would have been cool. And apparently the asking price for him was a third round pick. Tell me oh, my God. Tell me Why is this guy still move? a flyer? Oh my god. A third round pick? Oh yeah, Chuck let Fletcher. He's him, probably like probably in the air being like, oh cap cap eyes, we couldn't make it work. What the fuck are you talking about, bro? Minnesota retain Minnesota right now is retaining on two players that don't play for them. They don't play for them. They don't play for them. Arizona, Patrick Chan was a coyote. You know what I mean? See, Do see, something. Trying to, trying to make sense of the flyer situation just makes my head hurt. <laughs> Like there's no there's no there's no other way around it. They're so stupid. The Flyers the Flyers are such a passionate, um, notorious, historical hockey team, right? Uh-huh. They have their guys on the Broad Street bullies. Now they're just like, what what the fuck? And it and it's so funny too, because whenever like bad things happen, like torts is like they just try to torts to like, say something. Red red alert yeah. the fans. And it's the same like regurgitated stuff. It's like we need an identity. Yeah, your identities, yeah. your team is awful. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's right though. They need something, but it's it's like, to me, it's like, first of all, Provorov, that shit, um, that happened during the season, um, fucking, they, like, they didn't, did they do anything? I don't remember them doing anything. No. You guys suck. Trade someone. You suck. You literally suck. Sean Couturier, I, I I genuinely don't know if that guy's ever gonna play again. Let's be real here. He's torn his ACL like two two times. He's having like back surgery or something stupid. I don't know. That like also- who who. Who comes back from that? Ryan Allen to trade our first four. Play like 10, less than that games for them. Okay, you can't really blame the Flyers for the Ellis injury, but like, Katrina signed that contract. Has he played a game under that new contract? Will he play a game under that new contract? I think he's played like three games. And it's like, look, none of the Katrina stuff and the Ellis stuff can it be inherently their fault? No, but it just, you know, it's a theme. It's a theme. And I'm sorry to go in on the Flyers here, but I don't know what the fuck they're doing. How do you not trade JVR? Like, how do you not, like, just trade him for something? You let me a team when, like, chuck, chuck a shitty prospect at you or chuck a, a fourth. You want a third so bad? You Get a fourth. It's not that, that much of a deal. You guys can't draft anyway. Anyways, um, the next trade on the list that we have is going to be – hold on, let me go back here. Apologies. Yeah, it'd be, it'd be <laughs> so, the, anyway – uh, It'd be the chicken trade. It would be the chicken so, trade. Also, so Nick, Jacob can you please Chikrin, hold on, Nick, for a second. Can you tell us how you really feel about the Flyers? They cool. They all right. <laughs> um, but um, Jacob Chickering, first in two seconds. We kind of talked about it. Um, Ottawa was looking for a defenseman all year, and they got probably, arguably, the biggest one in the market. Jacob Chickering, um, good player, um, offensive, offensive dynamo, decent defensively. Um, adds another layer to their defensive. Because I like their defensive court now. When you add a guy like Chickering, it's a little, it's a lot deeper. It's a lot better. Um, sh- Shabbat, you have Jake Sanderson, who's only going to get better. Eric Branstrom has been good this year. Artem Zub is a guy. And and Chicker, that's that's five decent players. That's five decent players. You can't See, really... L- last, last night, after I was I, I was watching the, the, the Sens game, and I turned it off. Um, And then I follow a few Sens fans on Twitter. And I, I'm, I'm not poking fun. It's just ironic. Because that's when Chicker went down. 
And then I'm scrolling through my timeline and I'm like, there's no way this is happening. And I turn it on and Chicken's lying on the ice. I was like, are you serious? There's no way this is happening. He's fine. Shift. Yeah. Shift. Yeah. Like, <laughs> but oh, like, man, in that would, hindsight, that sucked, dude. That would have like, sucked, at, but... at, at first sight, it was like, there's no way. Like, it, it's all good that he's fine. I hope he's fine, but. Good good move for Ottawa. The, um, um, Pierre Dorian just keeps trying to add to that team. And somehow they were still bad this year. So it makes you think. Well, I'm, they're 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 on the, the cusp, maybe next year, but they're not making the playoffs this year. But I think great move for them. He's under contract. He doesn't make too much money, and I'm sure Ottawa's happy with that. Jacob Chickren, Ottawa Senator. Um, next up, the biggest, um, the next big trade. We talked about Mikhail Granlin. We talked about uh, um, we talked about. Well, Teddy Bluger went to Vegas. They keep adding depth. Now the next big trade on the list is going to be Tyler Bertuzzi. Is a Boston Bruin. Of course he's a Boston Bruin. Of course he's a Boston Bruin. Darius, Tyler Bertuzzi, he is He's a, a Boston, Boston Bruin. Bruin. He's a Boston Bruin. He, uh, like, the way he plays, he's a Boston Bruin. They gave up a first and a fourth for him. And that's it. Like, and what, what's his contract? Admittedly, I don't have it up here. But uh, uh, the, the Bruins retained 50%. Uh, 2,375,000. You mean the Red Wings retained? Is oh, he a so, rental? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He's a rental. Uh, so he's basically a rental on retained salary. Um, and Hall is on LTIR, but he, oh, he's coming back for the playoffs, obviously, because that's okay. what we do here. I want to say something about this. The fucking okay, you know what? Continue your point. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm. I have a point. To <laughs> I was just gonna say he has 14 points in 29 games. Obviously, he's not played the full season. I think he's dealt with some injuries. But the style of hockey he plays and he can chip in is definitely Boston Bruins hockey. Nick, go ahead. Dude, their third line is going to be like Coyle, Bertuzzi, and like Nick Foligno or something. Foligno, Maybe Taylor Hall. Some people are saying that Foligno might be done. Oh, okay. His injury might be pretty serious is what I saw. Could be wrong. I don't know. That's what I saw. But but like when Taylor Hall comes back, that left wing depth, Marshan, Hall, Bertuzzi. Holy fuck. Well, that's cool. That's all good. And also, congratulations to David Pasternak on his massive extension. Good for him. That too. Eight years for like $11.25 million. Good for him. Congratulations. He is most definitely deserving of that, for sure. Um, Speaking on Bertuzzi, though, last year, only played 68 games. Wonder why. <laughs> um, And he had 62 points. Um, If you're wondering why, he is an anti-vaxxer. I'm um, the only player in the NHL to not get vaccinated last year. But politics, politics aside, amazing player. And I'm very disappointed that the Bruins got him. Because adding Orlov half... Dude, Dimitri Orlov has been like a god in Boston. It's where the two goals his first game, yeah. Crazy. So, um, man, I hate the Bruins. But, like, I respect their ability to get players that are Boston Bruins. So, amazing trade for them. Bertuzzi last year, 60, 62 points, 30 goals last year, and now he's a Bruin. This year, as Darius said, only four goals, but I'm sure in Boston he'll figure it out because who doesn't go to Boston and figure it out at this point? So yeah. the Bruins, Bertuzzi, great fucking trade. Next up, we have um, – this is the point I wanted to make. So earlier this season, it was announced that Jakob Borchek is probably not going to be able to play hockey anymore because he's dealing with some, um, I think, it, what was it, concussion issues? I can't remember. It entirely. might be an equipment allergy. No, but, like, I think he was, yeah, like, actually, yeah, yeah. actually yeah, yeah. hurt. Um, and he is a Coyote. So now the Coyotes have, have had all these players that make a lot of money but are never going to play for them. Mm-hmm. Shea Weber, Andrew Ladd, Pavel Datsu, Chris Pronger, Dave Bolin, Marion Hosa, um, Jakob Borchek. And the NHL was like, put out a memo, like, oh, if you guys try and circumvent the cap, <laughs> we're going to investigate this. Um, okay. They only inv- they only investigate it if your team is winning. They don't care. Arizona circumvents the fucking cap every goddamn day. <laughs> these, all these contracts are insured. They don't actually have to pay them because they're injured. So it's a joke. It's a goddamn... The, the, the NHL will never be successful if you have to try and tell, explain this to someone. Imagine you're not a hockey fan and, like, um, Shea Weber, Shea Weber and Jakub Borchick get traded to Arizona. Some some guy who barely pays attention is like, oh, that's pretty good deals for them. No, because they're not playing for them. They're not playing anymore. 
So, um, yeah, it's a joke. The NHL's a joke. Gary Bettman continues to suck the freaking skin off the Arizona Coyotes. So, um, it is shout unbelievable. Out to, uh, shout out to what DeKalb. Doing. Yeah. Stupid, stupid fucking league. It's unbelievable that this happens in a league where, um, like, the, the, the biggest league in hockey and people are acquiring dead contracts because of the... It's, it's, it's a hard cap thing and it's an Arizona thing. It goes both ways. It just speaks to how inept Gary Bettman is of being a fucking commissioner and it's awful. Um, next up, um, so we talked about Jonathan Quick and then the next big trade, um, so we're finally getting into trades that happened and the trade deadline, basically. So um, Dallas announced late last night that they got Max Domi. Uh-huh. Um, decent trade for them. Domi had an amazingly productive season. Um, the numbers are a little bit of a facade. He was playing a super high role. He never really plays this much or like plays this much on the power play. Um, good depth piece, I think, for a team like Dallas who kind of lacks an offensive, real, a real offensive touch. Joe Pavelski hasn't scored in a while. They've kind of tailed off from. I'm, I'm sure Jason Roberts has still been insane, but um, he's kind of trailed off a little bit. Mason um, Marchment has turned into a ghost. Yep. Yep. Surprise, surprise. And then, um, Max Thomas is a really good passer, and the um, finishers of the Dallas Stars haven't been finishing lately. So maybe you bring in a decent playmaker and a guy like, um, you know, a guy like Max Thomas could really help it. And they added to Don also. They, they've added some depth there. They're shoring up their roster, and I like I like the Domi. I, I don't mind the Domi deal for Dallas, man. They didn't really pay that much either. Um, Anton Dobin, who um, I don't I don't know. I think he's injured, but I don't know if he plays too much. But um, uh-huh. this year, Max Domi had 49 points in 60 games. As I said, maybe not the most um, a, um best example of how good he really is. Um, in um, Columbus last year, he had 32 points. So a decent player. He's fine. He's good depth. And um, going to Dallas, um, Matt, do you think this makes Dallas any scarier? I've never really found Max Domi to be like a polarizing player. I've always found him to just be there. Like yeah. he won't make it. He won't make a team like that much better or that much worse. He'll he'll just be there to fill out a roster space. That's true. Yeah, I don't know. He, he's fine. Good depth for Dallas. But the next big trade, big trade on the list. So we are finally into trade deadline day. Now, I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Not much happened. Um, yeah, it's kind of dead. Nick, <laughs> Nick Benino went back to Pittsburgh. The Jets got their guy in Vlad Nemesnikov. Who is uh, another project? Blues, is another uh, project. Yeah. So Blues got Verana. That was a good deal for them. Nice I like that project. That was a decent trade. Nice. The um, Blues have done a little bit. They've done well, I think. Like this deadline. I think they had a great, great trade season. Yeah, like they kind of retooled here on the fly. They actually did it properly. Unlike the Canucks, who traded Curtis Lazar to the Devils. Good depth piece for them as well. Yeah, I mean, um. I think Verena was a great get for the Blues. Give him a fresh start. He definitely needed it. And St. Louis is now under no more pressure. They're not trying to make the playoffs this year. Um, it's good for him. He gets to go into a mix of um, young-ish players like Buchnevich, uh-huh. um, um, Jordan Kyron, Robert Thomas. He kind of he kind of fits their timeline. So good. Um, Doug is it Doug? It's Doug Armstrong, right? Doug Armstrong. Yeah. yeah Doug Armstrong. Great deadline. Um, I love when. I love when teams don't try and like, you know, stick in between the contender or the gonna like pretender. Doug Armstrong was like, okay, we're not good. Let's trade everyone. Let's get better. Hey, can, 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 can I just make a point here? Like the next deal, how does Jordan Greenway in 45 games, two goals, five apples, seven points, and he's traded for a 2023 20, second and a 2024 20, fifth, but you're telling me JVR couldn't get that? Like that was such a stupid. No, apparently deal. Jordan oh, exactly, Greenway right. is like. Apparently Jordan Greenway is one of the like best even strength defensive forwards in the league. Yeah, apparently. still a second and a oh, that. That's the thing you can't me. compare them because the Flyers are inept. Right? Yeah, that's so true. That's that's, that's the true. blockage right there, right? <laughs> and now the last trade we will discuss in this episode: John Klingberg, who has been god awful this season. <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Holy shit! Terrible is now a Minnesota Wild, and he went for like a fourth. Um, I don't think this moves the needle at all for either team. Klingberg sucks. Um, so um, yeah, nothing we can say. It's but just a move. Lo- it's just a move for the yeah, sake of a move, just, man. Like, no, it's you know, like I was saying, like 
um, if teams are bad and have rentals, like just trade the guy for anything. Who cares? Get something back. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's what that's what Enron did. Good for Who them. Cares? Good for them. Get something. Get yes. a fourth. Sure. Better than nothing. And the last. Now I will say thank you guys for listening thus far. Um, a little bit of a longer episode. But um, I thought you know trade right, season is now rightfully so though. Yeah, this is yeah. there's a reason Best why deadline it's long. like ever. <laughs> trade season is now officially over. Um, it's been a fun one. Um, we've been doing our best to try and cover the big ones here. Um, but now the rap question, fellas. Now we've kind of aired out our opinions here. Um, but I do want to say, well, sorry, I, I didn't say this. Um, thank you, Darius, for being the producer of the show. Oh, thanks, man. Shout out Matt for paying the paying the premium zoom account fee shout yes, out sir. me for hosting but the rap question today is um before we get into that um again subscribe on youtube hit that bell follow us on all our socials tiktok all that cool stuff and who is your winner of the trade deadline who is your loser of the trade deadline matt i will go to you first uh the winner um i think it's kind of obvious in my books here it's it's the boston bruins i mean they got significantly better without not giving up that much and then the loser here it could be multiple teams uh but i'm gonna go with the jets they could have done much more but they didn't mm-hmm. there is. i think uh to pick one is hard i think like there's a few for different reasons like i like what st louis did a lot because they retooled on the fly they recognized that they're they're not that great anymore they were heading down so i like what they did i like what the leafs did a lot because they kind of just moved pieces in moved uh, pieces out that they needed uh, that they could afford to give up and re you know they got a draft pick back like for Sandy and stuff like that so I really like what the Leafs did if they went around it's going to look really good on them um, I just got to get over that hump that, that's um, how low the bar is like if they yeah. went around <laughs> yeah if plan the parade literally like not that I think if they just get over the hump it would be a little bit easier mentally on them but um, uh, it's like it's like the caps in 2018 like once they got over that, just get over that, hump. that hill yeah, absolutely. So I, I really like what they did, uh, giving themselves the best chance just to get over that hump, and then who knows what happens after that. Uh, and like Matt said too, the Bruins did not give up a lot, got a little bit better, and they are already like the fastest team ever to get 100 points. So it's kind of silly. Uh, <laughs> losers, definitely the Jets. I feel like they're in the race to, like, if they want to make a push in that Western Conference, like they could have done a lot more. I think. Uh, and the Flyers definitely losers because they could have got a lot worse. Uh, they could have got assets for some of these guys. Um, the the honorable mention though, um, yeah. just for the one deal, uh, Tampa Bay, that was stupid. And I was going to say yeah, that. that was a horrible I was going to say yeah. that. I was going to say that. I wouldn't say they're losers though, because yes, they gave up a lot, and it's a that's a shit trade. But when you look at it at face value in their whole roster, that's a good damn team, man. Like also, that's... to be fair, Tampa doesn't care about draft picks. Their exactly. core is getting my... older. Yeah. They're trying to win the club. They don't care. But Matt, I'm in a vacuum. Shit trade. Yeah. Um, for me, um, <coughs> the winners, I'm going to give it to my solidified winner. I'm going to give it to the St. Louis Blues. Mm-hmm. Um, um, they, as I said, I already aired up my opinion on them. Smart. Um, trade the guys that are older, expiring. Don't try and hold on to something that isn't there. So um, that that was great for them. Um, I will also say mention the Leafs. Um, they, they built a playoff team. That's what they did. This trade, Allen, they built a playoff team. Um. I will say, we said the Flyers are losers, the Jets are losers. One low-key loser, um, I feel like they, not a loser, but I feel like they could have done more, is the Carolina Hurricanes. Um, I think um, when I look at their roster, I said I said last episode, they need a guy, not not like the guy was available aside from Meyer, but I would have liked them for, to swing for someone more impactful. I think Puyarvi and Gosses Bear are great around the edges, guys, for depth. But Carolina, they they... They, they've hoarded all their assets. They have great prospects. And in the playoffs, they they, they can't get over them because they don't maybe don't have that guy. Maybe they need more guys. I think Carolina could have done more. I don't think they're, like, a big loser. But I think, you know, they're a loser in the sense of they, they could have done a little more. more. I think. Yeah. Um, but, fellas, with that being said, trade season is done. We are now on the road to the playoffs. We want the playoffs to start. We'll be here every week covering – that all that stuff but that being said if you're watching this um at night have a great night watching this today have a great day if you're driving while listening to this please drive safely and we'll see you guys next week have a great week and a great weekend peace out for more content visit our youtube channel
and check us out on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Don't forget to follow the guys on social media at Matt underscore Mondays, at Nick Laflame, and at Darius Dominguez.